History of Chad. Published December the 9th, 2017. Special characters are denoted as follows. And. Left and right parentheses. Chad. In French, Chad. Officially the Republic of Chad is a landlocked country in West Africa. It borders Libya to the north, Sudan to the east, the Central African Republic to the south, Cameroon and Nigeria to the southwest, and Niger to the west. Due to its distance from the sea and its largely desert climate, the country is sometimes referred to as the dead heart of Africa. Part 1. Prehistory. The territory now known as Chad possesses some of the richest archaeological sites in Africa. A hominid skull was found by Michel Brunet in 2002, in Borku, that is more than 7 million years old, the oldest discovered anywhere in the world. It has been given the name Sahelanthropus chadensis. In 1996 Michel Brunet had unearthed a hominid jaw which he named Australopithecus baral hazali, and unofficially dubbed Abel. It was dated using beryllium-based radiometric dating as living circa 3.6 million years ago. During the 7th millennium BC, the northern half of Chad was part of a broad expanse of land, stretching from the Indus River in the east to the Atlantic Ocean in the west, in which ecological conditions favored early human settlement. Rock art of the roundhead style, found in the Andadi region, has been dated to before the 7th millennium BC and, because of the tools with which the rocks were carved and the scenes they depict, may represent the oldest evidence in the Sahara of Neolithic industries. Many of the pottery making and Neolithic activities in Ndadi date back further than any of those of the Nile Valley to the east. In the prehistoric period, Chad was much wetter than it is today, as evidenced by large game animals depicted in rock paintings in the Tibesti and Borka regions. Recent linguistic research suggests that all of Africa's major language groupings south of the Sahara Desert, except Kizan, which is not considered a valid genetic grouping anyway. I. E. The Afroasiatic, Nilo Saharan, and Niger Congo phyla originated in prehistoric times in a narrow band between Lake Chad and the Nile Valley. The origins of Chad's peoples, however, remain unclear. Several of the proven archaeological sites have been only partially studied, and other sites of great potential have yet to be mapped. Part 2. Era of Empires. AD 900-1900. Toward the end of the first millennium AD, the formation of states began across central Chad in the Sahelian zone between the desert and the savanna. For almost the next 1,000 years, these states, their relations with each other, and their effects on the peoples who lived in stateless societies along their peripheries dominated Chad's political history. Recent research suggests that indigenous Africans founded most of these states, not migrating Arabic-speaking groups, as was believed previously. Nonetheless, immigrants, Arabic-speaking or otherwise, played a significant role along with Islam, in the formation and early evolution of these states. Most states began as kingdoms, in which the king was considered divine and endowed with temporal and spiritual powers. All states were militaristic. Or they did not survive long. But none was able to expand far into southern Chad, where forests and the tsetse fly complicated the use of cavalry. Control over the trans-Saharan trade routes that passed through the region formed the economic basis of these kingdoms. Although many states rose and fell, the most important and durable of the empires were Kanem Bornu, Bagayami, and Uadi, according to most written sources. Mainly court chronicles and writings of Arab traders and travelers. Part 2. Era of Empires Chapter 1 Kanem Bornu. The Kanem Empire originated in the 9th century AD to the northeast of Lake Chad. Historians agree that leaders of the new state were ancestors of the Kanembu people. Toward the end of the 11th century, the Saifawa king, or Mai, 
the title of the Sefer were rulers. Homei, converted to Islam. In the following century the Sefer were rulers expanded southward into Canaan, where was to rise their first capital, Njimi. Canaan's expansion peaked during the long and energetic reign of Maidunama Dabilemi. C. 1221-1259 By the end of the 14th century, internal struggles and external attacks had torn Kanem apart. Finally, around 1396 the Bulal invaders forced my Umar Idris me to abandon Jimi and move the Kanembu people to Bornu on the western edge of Lake Chad. Over time, the intermarriage of the Kanembu and Bornu peoples created a new people and language, the Kanuri, and founded a new capital, Gazagamu. Kanem Bornu peaked during the reign of the outstanding statesman, my Idris Aluma. C. 1571-1603 Aluma is remembered for his military skills, administrative reforms, and Islamic piety. The administrative reforms and military brilliance of Aluma sustained the empire until the mid-17th century, when its power began to fade. By the early 19th century, Kanem Bornu was clearly an empire in decline, and in 1808 Fulani warriors conquered Gazagamu. Bornu survived, but the Sefawa dynasty ended in 1846 and the empire itself fell in 1893. Part 2. Era of Empires Chapter 2. Bagayami and Uadi. In addition to Kanem Bornu, to other states in the region, Bagayami and Uadi achieved historical prominence. Bagayami emerged to the southeast of Kanem Bornu in the 16th century. Islam was adopted, and the state became a sultanate. Absorbed into Kanem Bornu, Bagayami broke free later in the 17th century only to be returned to tributary status in the mid-18th century. Early in the 19th century, Bagayami fell into decay and was threatened militarily by the nearby kingdom of Uadi. Although Bagayami resisted, it accepted tributary status in order to obtain help from Uadi in putting down internal dissension. When the capital was burned in 1893, the Sultan sought and received protectorate status from the French. Located in northeast of Bagayami, Uadi was a non-Muslim kingdom that emerged in the 16th century as an offshoot of the state of Darfur. In present-day Sudan Early in the 12th century, groups in the region rallied to Abd al-Karim Saban, who overthrew the ruling Dunja group, transforming Uadi into an Islamic sultanate. During much of the 18th century, Uadi resisted reincorporation into Darfur. In about 1804, under the rule of Saban, the Sultanate began to expand its power. A new trade route north was discovered, and Saban outfitted royal caravans to take advantage of it. He began minting his own coinage and imported chainmail, firearms, and military advisors from North Africa. Saban's successes were less able than he and Darfur took advantage of a disputed political succession in 1838 to put its own candidate in power. This tactic backfired when Darfur's choice, Muhammad Sharif, rejected Darfur and asserted his own authority. In doing so, he gained acceptance from Uadis various factions and went on to become Uadis ablest ruler. Sharif eventually established Uadis hegemony over Bagayami and kingdoms as far away as the Chari River. The Uadi opposed French domination until well into the 20th century. Part 3. Colonialism 1940 The French first penetrated Chad in 1891, establishing their authority through military expeditions primarily against the Muslim kingdoms. The decisive colonial battle for Chad was fought on April the 22nd. 1900 at Battle of Kuaeri between forces of French Major Amadi Francois Lamy and forces of the Sudanese warlord Rabi as Zubaira. Both leaders were killed in the battle. In 1905, administrative responsibility for Chad was placed under a governor general stationed at Brazzaville, capital of French Equatorial Africa. A.E.F. 
Chad did not have a separate colonial status until 1920, when it was placed under a lieutenant governor stationed in Fort Lamy. To Danjamina. To fundamental themes dominated Chad's colonial experience with the French, an absence of policies designed to unify the territory and an exceptionally slow pace of modernization. In the French scale of priorities, the colony of Chad ranked near the bottom, and the French came to perceive Chad primarily as a source of raw cotton and untrained labor to be used in the more productive colonies to the south. Throughout the colonial period, large areas of Chad were never governed effectively. In the huge BET prefecture, the handful of French military administrators usually left the people alone, and in central Chad, French rule was only slightly more substantive. Truly speaking, France managed to govern effectively only the South. Part 4 Decolonization 1940 During World War II, Chad was the first French colony to rejoin the Allies. August 26, 1940 After the defeat of France by Germany, under the administration of Félix Ebu, France's first black colonial governor, a military column, commanded by Colonel Philippe Leclerc de Houtercloque, and including two battalions of Sarah troops, moved north from Jamina, then Fort Lamy, to engage Axis forces in Libya, where, in partnership with the British Army's long-ranged Ezzet group, they captured Kafra. On 21 January 1942, Jamina was bombed by a German aircraft. After the war ended local parties started to develop in Chad. The first to be born was the radical Chadian Progressive Party. PPT. In February 1947, initially headed by Panamanian-born Gabriel Lisset, but from 1959 headed by François Tombalbé, the more conservative Chadian Democratic Union. UDT was founded in November 1947 and represented French commercial interests and a bloc of traditional leaders composed primarily of Muslim and Udayi and nobility. The confrontation between the PPT and UDT was more than simply ideological. It represented different regional identities, with the PPT representing the Christian and animist South and the UDT the Islamic North. The PPT won the May 1957 pre-independence elections thanks to a greatly expanded franchise, and Lisette led the government of the Territorial Assembly until he lost a confidence vote on the 11th of February 1959. After a referendum on territorial autonomy on 28 September 1958, French Equatorial Africa was dissolved, and its four constituent states Gabon, Congo, Brazzaville, the Central African Republic, and Chad became autonomous members of the French community from 28 November 1958. Following Lysette's fall in February 1959 the opposition leaders Gonja Omsahulba and Ahmed Koulimola could not form a stable government, so the PPT was again asked to form an administration which it did under the leadership of François Tombalbé on 26 March 1959. On 12 July 1960 France agreed to Chad becoming fully independent. On the 11th of August 1960, Chad became an independent country and François Tombalbé became its first president. Part 5. The Tombalbé Era 1960-75 one of the most prominent aspects of Tom Balbay's rule to prove itself was his authoritarianism and distrust of democracy. Already in January 1962 he banned all political parties except his own PPT, and started immediately concentrating all power in his own hands. His treatment of opponents, real or imagined, was extremely harsh, filling the prisons with thousands of political prisoners. What was even worse was his constant discrimination against the central and northern regions of Chad, where the southern Chadian administrators came to be perceived as arrogant and incompetent. This resentment at last exploded in a tax revolt on November 1, 1965, in the Ga'era prefecture, 
causing 500 deaths. The year after saw the birth in Sudan of the National Liberation Front of Chad. F-R-O-L-I-N-T Created to militarily oust Tom Bay and the Southern Dominance. It was the start of a bloody civil war. Tom Bay resorted to calling in French troops. While moderately successful, they were not fully able to quell the insurgency. Proving more fortunate was his choice to break with the French and seek friendly ties with Libyan President Gaddafi, taking away the rebels' principal source of supplies. But while he had reported some success against the rebels, Tom Balbay started behaving more and more irrationally and brutally, continuously eroding his consensus among the southern elites, which dominated all key positions in the army, the civil service and the ruling party. As a consequence on April 13, 1975, several units of Njumanas Gend Armory killed Tom Balbay during a coup. Part 6. Military Rule 1975-78 The coup d'etat that terminated Tom Balbay's government received an enthusiastic response in Jamina. The Southern General Felix Malum emerged early as the chairman of the new junta. The new military leaders were unable to retain for long the popularity that they had gained through their overthrow of Tom Balbay. Malum proved himself unable to cope with the FROLINRT and at the end did A northerner, was named President, Colonel Kamug, a southerner, Vice President, and Habit, Minister of Defense. This coalition proved fragile. In January 1980, fighting broke out again between Gao County's and Habrez forces. With assistance from Libya, Gao County regained control of the capital and other urban centers by year's end. However, Gao County's January 1981 statement that Chad and Libya had agreed to work for the realization of complete unity between the two countries generated intense international pressure and Gao County's subsequent call for the complete withdrawal of external forces. Part 8. The Haber Era. 1982-90. C. Chadian-Libyan Conflict. Libya's partial withdrawal to the Awozu Strip in northern Chad cleared the way for Habrez forces to enter Jamina in June. French troops and an OAU peacekeeping force of 3,500 Nigerian, Senegalese, and Zairean troops, partially funded by the United States, remained neutral during the conflict. Haber continued to face armed opposition on various fronts and was brutal in his repression of suspected opponents, massacring and torturing many during his rule. In the summer of 1983, GUNT forces launched an offensive against government positions in northern and eastern Chad with heavy Libyan support. In response to Libya's direct intervention, French and Zairean forces intervened to defend Habit, pushing Libyan and rebel forces north of the 16th parallel. In September 1984, the French and the Libyan governments announced an agreement for the mutual withdrawal of their forces from Chad. 
By the end of the year, all French and Zairean troops were withdrawn. Libya did not honor the withdrawal accord, and its forces continued to occupy the northern third of Chad. Rebel Commando Groups Kodos In southern Chad were broken up by government massacres in 1984. In 1985 Haber briefly reconciled with some of his opponents, including the Democratic Front of Chad. FDT and the Coordinating Action Committee of the Democratic Revolutionary Council. Gao County also began to rally toward Habit, and with his support Habit successfully expelled Libyan forces from most of Chadian territory. A ceasefire between Chad and Libya held from 1987 to 1988, and negotiations over the next several years led to the 1994 International Court of Justice decision granting Chad sovereignty over the Al Yuzu Strip effectively ending Libyan occupation. Part 9. The Debi Era Part 9. The Debi Era. Chapter 1. Rise to Power. However, rivalry between Hajarai, Zagarawa and Gorain groups within the government grew in the late 1980s. In April 1989, Idris Debi, one of Habra's leading generals and a Zagar Awa, defected and fled to Darfur in Sudan, from which he mounted a Zagar Awa supported series of attacks on Haba. Agorain In December 1990, with Libyan assistance and no opposition from French troops stationed in Chad, Debis forces successfully marched on Jamina. After three months of provisional government, Debis Patriotic Salvation Movement. MPS approved a national charter on February the 28th, 1991, with Debbie as president. During the next two years, Debbie faced at least two coup attempts. Government forces clashed violently with rebel forces, including the Movement for Democracy and Development (MDD) National Revival Committee for Peace and Democracy (CSNPD), Chadian National Front. FNT and the Western Armed Forces. FO Near Lake Chad and in southern regions of the country, earlier French demands for the country to hold a national conference resulted in the gathering of 750 delegates representing political parties, which were legalized in 1992. The government trade unions and the army to discuss the creation of a pluralist democratic regime. However, unrest continued, sparked in part by large-scale killings of civilians in southern Chad. The CSNPD, led by Ket Moyes and other southern groups entered into a peace agreement with government forces in 1994, which later broke down. Two new groups, the Armed Forces for a Federal Republic. FRF led by former Ket ally La Akain Bard and the Democratic Front for Renewal, FDR, and reformulated MDD clashed with government forces from 1994 to 1995. Part 9. The Debi Era. Chapter 2. Multi-Party Elections. Talks with political opponents in early 1996 did not go well but Debbie announced his intent to hold presidential elections in June. Debbie won the country's first multi-party presidential elections with support in the second round from opposition leader Keb Zabo, defeating General Kamug, leader of the 1975 coup against Tombal Bay. Debbie's MPS party won 63 of 125 seats in the January 1997 legislative elections. International observers noted numerous serious irregularities in presidential and legislative election proceedings. By mid-1997 the government signed peace deals with FRF and their MDD leadership and succeeded in cutting off the groups from their rear bases in the Central African Republic and Cameroon. Agreements also were struck with rebels from the National Front of Chad. FNT and Movement for Social Justice and Democracy in October 1997. However, peace was short-lived, as FRF rebels clashed with government soldiers, 
finally surrendering to government forces in May 1998, Bard was killed in the fighting, as were hundreds of other Southerners, most civilians. Since October 1998, Chadian Movement for Justice and Democracy. MDJT. Rebels, led by Yusuf Togoimi until his death in September 2002, have skirmished with government troops in the Tibesti region, resulting in hundreds of civilian, government, and rebel casualties, but little ground won or lost. No active armed opposition has emerged in other parts of Chad, although Ketmoys, following senior postings at the Ministry of Interior, mounted a small-scale local operation near Moundou which was quickly and violently suppressed by government forces in late 2000. Debi, in the mid-1990s, gradually restored basic functions of government and entered into agreements with the World Bank and IMF to carry out substantial economic reforms. Oil exploitation in the southern Doba region began in June 2000, with World Bank board approval to finance a small portion of a project, the Chad Cameroon Petroleum Development Project, aimed at transport of Chadian crude through a 1,000 kilometers buried pipeline through Cameroon to the Gulf of Guinea. The project established unique mechanisms for World Bank, private sector, government, and civil society collaboration to guarantee that future oil revenues benefit local populations and result in poverty alleviation. Success of the project depended on multiple monitoring efforts to ensure that all parties keep their commitments. These unique mechanisms for monitoring and revenue management have faced intense criticism from the beginning. Debt relief was accorded to Chad in May 2001. Debbie won a flawed 63% first round victory in May 2001 presidential elections after legislative elections were postponed until spring 2002. Having accused the government of fraud, six opposition leaders were arrested. Twice. And one opposition party activist was killed following the announcement of election results. However, despite claims of government corruption, Favoritism of Zagar R was, and abuses by the security forces, opposition party and labor union calls for general strikes and more active demonstrations against the government have been unsuccessful. Despite movement toward democratic reform, power remains in the hands of a northern ethnic oligarchy. In 2003, Chad began receiving refugees from the Darfur region of western Sudan. More than 200,000 refugees fled the fighting between two rebel groups and government-supported militias known as Janjaweed. A number of border incidents led to the Chadian-Sudanese War. Part 9, The Debi Era. Chapter 3, War in the East. The war started on December 23, 2005 when the government of Chad declared a state of war with Sudan and called for the citizens of Chad to mobilize themselves against the common enemy, which the Chadian government sees as the rally for democracy and liberty. RDL Militants, Chadian rebels, backed by the Sudanese government, and Sudanese militiamen. Militants have attacked villages and towns in eastern Chad, stealing cattle, murdering citizens, and burning houses. Over 200,000 refugees from the Darfur region of northwestern Sudan currently claim asylum in eastern Chad. Chadian President Idris Deby accuses Sudanese President Omar Hazen Ahmad al-Bashir of trying to destabilize our country, to drive our people into misery, to create disorder and export the war from Darfur to Chad. An attack on the Chadian town of Adra near the Sudanese border led to the deaths of either 100 rebels, as every news source other than CNN has reported, or 300 rebels. The Sudanese government was blamed for the attack, which was the second in the region in three days, but Sudanese Foreign Ministry spokesman Jamal Mohammed Ibrahim denies any Sudanese involvement, we are not for any escalation with Chad. We technically deny involvement in Chadian internal affairs. This attack was the final straw that led to the declaration of war by Chad and the alleged deployment of the Chadian Air Force into Sudanese airspace, which the Chadian government denies. An attack on Jamina was defeated on April 13, 2006 in the Battle of Jamina. 
the president on national radio stated that the situation was under control, but residents, diplomats and journalists reportedly heard shots of weapons fire. On November 25, 2006, rebels captured the eastern town of Abech, capital of the Uadi region and center for humanitarian aid to the Darfur region in Sudan. On the same day, a separate rebel group rally of democratic forces had captured Bill Dean. On November 26, 2006, the Chadian government claimed to have recaptured both towns, although rebels still claimed control of Bill Dean. Government buildings and humanitarian aid offices in Abech were said to have been looted. The Chadian government denied a warning issued by the French embassy in Jamina that a group of rebels was making its way through the Bada prefecture in central Chad. Chad insists that both rebel groups are supported by the Sudanese government. Part 9. The Debi Era. Chapter 4. International Orphanage Scandal. Nearly 100 children at the center of an international scandal that left them stranded at an orphanage in remote eastern Chad returned home after nearly five months March 14, 2008. The 97 children were taken from their homes in October 2007 by a then-obscure French charity, Zoe's Ark, which claimed they were orphans from Sudan's war-torn Darfur region. Part 9 the Debi Era. Chapter 5, Rebel Attack on Jamina. On Friday, February 1, 2008, rebels, an opposition alliance of leaders Muhammad Nouri, a former defense minister, and Timain and Imi, a nephew of Idris Debi who was his chief of staff, attacked the Chadian capital of Jamina, even surrounding the presidential palace. But Idris Debi with government troops fought back. French forces flew in ammunition for Chadian government troops but took no active part in the fighting. UN has said that up to 20,000 people left the region, taking refuge in nearby Cameroon and Nigeria. Hundreds of people were killed, mostly civilians. The rebels accused Ebi of corruption and embezzling millions in oil revenue. While many Chadians may share that assessment, the uprising appears to be a power struggle within the elite that has long controlled Chad. The French government believes that the opposition has regrouped east of the capital. Debbie has blamed Sudan for the current unrest in Chad. This recording is a derivative work from Wikipedia. For more information, please visit www.frogcast.org.